Okay, people, so I'm going to be showing you how I would be answering this exam paper, showing you different techniques and things like that. So let's have a look at the first question. The only time the output will be one when both inputs are one. Well, this is basically talking about logic gates to start off with because it says it here. Now, what does it mean by both inputs being one? Well, that means A is one. B is 1. So these two are inputs. Input A, input B, and the output would be X. And the only time this output will be 1 is if both inputs are 1. Now, what logic gate truth table would be this? So if we did an OR gate, we would have which also means that the output is 1. That means it can't be an OR gate because now we've got two outputs being 1. We've got this one and this one. But the question said the only time the output will be 1. So let's do an AND truth table. 1 and 0 is 0, 0 and 1 is also 0 and 0 0 0 is also 0 therefore it would be an AND gate and to draw it you need to have one line another line this shape which is the AND and this sticking out these lines represent what we call circuits. So this is input A, input B, but you don't need to draw those letters on. So this is what you should have had. You definitely do need the lines. This is important. This line, this line, and that line. We then are given this next question where it's got lots of writing on it. Well, a lot of this writing is actually relevant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross out the relevant writing. I don't care that she has a website. I genuinely don't care. So goodbye, website. I don't care about her web server. Goodbye. I'm now going to underline the keywords I recognize. Well, I recognize parallel. Duplex, what does that mean? Well, that is full duplex. And I recognize data transmission. So what's the question asking me? It wants me to describe, so talk about in detail, how data is transmitted using parallel and full duplex. So what do I know about, I'll start off with full duplex. So full duplex is where you've got computer A, computer B, and data can travel from computer A to computer B and computer B can also at the same time send data to computer A. So let's put that in writing. Duplex. Let's change the font. Duplex is where, in fact, let's just do it like this. Data can can travel between two different devices at the same time. That is duplex, full duplex. This can travel between two different devices at the same time. Let's have a look at parallel. So parallel, we should be aware of. Where's my paintbrush gone? There we go. So I've got computer A. I'm sending something to computer B. And we're now looking at the method of how data travels. So we've got a choice. It can go down either one cable, and that would be serial, or we can set it down multiple cables or channels, eight in fact, to make a byte. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So parallel is where data at the same time can travel down many different wires or channels or eight channels simultaneously, so together at the same time. So, is where data can travel at the same time down many eight different paths. Well, actually, just take out paths and put wires, channels. Now, normally, it is eight pieces of data traveling. And there we go. That is the answer for this question. You don't need to put wires slash channels, or you can do cables as well. You can just talk about one of those. Now, some of you were talking about when do we use parallel? And some of you put, oh, it's good for uh, speed, sending stuff quickly. Yeah, but we don't care about that. Some of you said long distance. Yeah, but it's not asking about that. It's asking how is data transmitted, not why do we use parallel? This question was very easy, and it was showing me who's practiced and who hasn't practiced. Another way of saying this is, what is the definition of a URL? So, basically, a URL stands for Uniform Resource Locator. So that would have got you a mark if you said that. So let me put the different marks in different colors. You could have said a URL is a website's address and will take you to the web server of a website. That will get you another mark. Or you could have put A URL is easier to remember than its IP address counterpart. So I said to you that if we didn't have URLs, such as um, http www.google.com, you would have to remember its IP address, such as 192. And that is actually hard to remember, loads and loads of IP addresses. It's hard to remember. They're numbers. We remember words better than numbers. So we created the URL, which is linked to the IP address. But it means you don't have to remember the IP address. Right. This question was done pretty well, but there are people who did not get it right. Some people got things confused. So we should have, a good way to start off would be to do the data units quickly. So bit, byte, gigabyte, megabyte, and gigabyte. We don't need to go any higher because the maximum is gigabyte. And then we need to remember that going up and going down is going to be different. So if we were going up is divide by a thousand. And if we're going down, we multiply by a thousand. Apart from when we're doing bytes to bits and bits to bytes. Now 
we want to work out which one's bigger, 20 megabytes or 10 gigabytes. So it's, I need to find out which one's the larger one. So I don't really care which one I'm going to focus on. Let's focus on gigabytes. If I want to work out how many megabytes, so we're on gigabytes here, I want to find out how many megabytes it is so I can compare it to 20. I need to get the 10, and I need to multiply it by 1,000. Already I can see that is way bigger than 20 megabytes. So 10 gigabytes is bigger. Easy. I could have done it the other way. I could have got 20 megabytes and turn it into gigabytes by dividing it by a thousand. By then moving the decimal point. But I didn't need to do the working out because I'm bright enough to see straight away just by writing out my 20 divided by 1,000, that the result is going to be smaller than 10. We're now given a new question where we've got 3,500 kilobytes, 3 megabytes, which one's larger? So the easiest way for me would be more or less to multiply going down. So I'm going to basically turn megabytes into kilobytes. So we've got 3 megabytes. And we want to turn it into kilobytes, so I need to multiply it by a thousand. That's going to give me three thousand megabytes, which we can see is clearly smaller than three thousand five hundred. Sorry, kilobytes. Bleh. Which we can see is smaller than three thousand five hundred kilobytes. Therefore, this one's larger. Okay, so I see this question, I'm thinking, oh my god, what is it asking of me? It's easy. It's basically saying, at the moment we've got a deanery number, which is on a screen like this. We want to state the binary number, so we need to turn it from deanery all the way to binary but it's 12 bits, it says 12 bit register. So, if we did our placeholder values, one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128. We know this is gonna be a zero, we know this is gonna be a zero, we know this is gonna be a one, we know this could be a zero, we know this could be a zero, we know that this could be a one, so we've got 36 now, so 32 plus 4 is 36, 38, 39. But, so let's put this out, if there's 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, which gives us 8 bits. But it says we want to store it as 12 bits, so I need to put another zero, another zero, another zero, and another zero to make it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Boom. There's many people who just did it as eight bits. Mm -mm. The second question is the same as the first, but it's saying 350. So, I'm not going to do that. If you got it wrong, see if you can do it again and check your math. My advice when you're doing this is to do it by doing two numbers at a time when you're adding up. Or taking away, depending on whatever method you use. So, this next question is asking to turn this number into hexadecimal. We've done this quite a lot of times. I've even shown you a really easy method, but what's confused you is this. 
normally what we do is we get a number, let's say like, uh, or let number less, so to say four A. In fact, no, normally we do a number like 49. And let's turn it into hexadecimal. So the first thing we need to do is turn it into binary. So one, two, four, eight, 16, just hurt my fingers, 32, 64, and 128. So we know it's gonna be 0, 0, 1, 1, 48, 0, 0, 0, 1. The next step, now that we've got a binary number, is to always then split it down the middle, karate chop it. This will give us one on this side. On this side, we replace these placeholder values with one, two, four, and eight. We then add up this side, so two add one is three. That will give us 31 as our hexadecimal number. So how's this question different? Well, it doesn't need us to turn this into a binary number to start off with. It's already got a binary number. So let's have a look. So I'm doing, 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 doing. First thing we do with our binary number is split it down the middle. Place all the values, please. One, two, four, and eight. If we add up all the ones, we've got eight plus four, sorry, eight plus two is 10, plus one is 11. Now we know that 11 in hexadecimal would be B. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. A is 10, 11 is B. So I can write the B here. So it's capital B. On this side, we do the place all the values again. One, two, four, eight. And we know we've got the number four. And that is it. Our next question is looking at storage um, categories. We looked at it last year in a little bit of detail. We know that we've got primary, memory. So it's primary memory. Oh my gosh, primary memory secondary storage devices and offline storage. We know that secondary storage devices, so you've got two coming out of it. We've got hard disk drive and solid state drive. We know offline, we've got a number coming out of it. We've got DVD, Blu-ray, I can't be able to write all of these. My finger is really hurting me right now. So let's do B for Blu-ray, CD, USB memory stick, memory stick. Seriously, like using this mouse sucks. Someone buy me a little pen thing I could use with my graphics tablet. I've lost it. Um, and we've got removable hard drives, etc. I'm going to do REM for removable hard drive. That leaves us with primary memory, where we've got the brothers from another mother, RAM, and RAM. So we should have circled primary memory. Okay, so what we have here is fishing and farming. Fishing is where you are sent. You are sent a legitimate, let's make this big, looking email. In the, it's still on a different line. In the email is a link taking you to a fake website. On the fake website, it wants you to put in your personal information. That is phishing. Farming. Malicious, which is 
bad, evil code on a server, which is where websites live, or your hard drive send you to a fake website, which encourages you to put in your personal information. should be Senji. There you go. They're both very similar. Phishing is about email though. Farming is basically malicious code on your computer hard drive or on a website web server, which will take you to a fake website, wanting your personal information. You've got to come up with a way to remember that phishing is linked to email, farming is linked to malicious code on the server. Okay, you might need your glasses for this one. We've got different terms down here from this list. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little tick next to the terms I've learned this year in computer science. So we've learned about browser. We've learned at internet, ISP. We kind of looked at IP address. We've looked at protocol, URL, and web pages and HTML. So what we haven't looked at is the rest of them. The next thing I'm going to do is read this with the blanks there. A blank is a program that allows a user to view. Program, program. Well, what definition has program or app or software? What is a program? This shows me he's practiced. It is a browser, a web browser like Google Chrome. It's a program. It allows you to view, so it allows people to view web pages, websites. Because it translates HTML into the web pages we were expecting. Uh, and something is a I, is a company that provides connection. So what provides connection? What gives you connection to something? ISP, Internet Service Provider. Now, another clue is the very fact that it starts with an. If it starts with an as a sentence, it needs to start with a vowel, the next word. But that's just geeky. Don't worry about that. So an ISP. Internet Service Provider is a company that provides people connection to access for what? What does ISPs give you access to? Yes, the internet. Well done. The main something that governs transmission of data, so the rules of data transmission, the rules of using the internet, is HTTP. Now, HTTP, if I did a URL, And you've practiced this. Blah, 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 blah. HTTP is what in a URL? If you have to label it. You got it. If you can't get it, you haven't practiced it. It's a protocol. And protocols are bosses. They govern. They're in charge of how we use the internet. Data transmission. And there we go. And finally, we have this question, which still some people are struggling with. So you are going to practice, if you've got this wrong, my method over and over and over again on this question. But I'll give you other questions, and we'll do the same. So we know that if something is going to be one, we, all we have to do is draw a straight line. If something is not one, we do a straight line with a not gate. So step one, always go to the first bracket and take the first input, the first letter, and underline it, or you can put a little box around it even. A is one. 
So all I need to do is draw a straight line. A is one straight line. I then skip the end and I do B is one. And I do a straight line for B. It then says, oops, this is crossing out. So I've done A is one, I've now done B is one. How do I connect A to B? I've got to use and. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this and this. And we've got our and. And cross all of this out. I then skip the or because it joins the brackets together and I go to the next bracket. I put a box or underline it. A is not one. So, uh-oh, I've already used A already. That is fine. I just need to do another line coming off it. I'm gonna do this little dot to show there's a new line coming. But this time I'm gonna add a knot to my line. There we go. That's a really bad knot, but never mind. I then skip the and I go to oops. Before I do it, just cross out A is not one. C is one. So I find C, I do a straight line. I cross out C and I need to connect my A is not one to my C is one. I do that by using the AND. I cross it out. That leaves us with this gate not attached to anything and this gate not attached to anything. Now this gate basically is all of this. This gate is basically all of this. And how do we join them together? We use an OR gate. Ta-da! We are done. That is full marks. Oops, and now I can't stop my video. There we go.